Salutations, Queenie Q here, and I had this idea for a video series um, about uh, basically going through and reviewing Go to Ladies books, because um, 19th century women's magazines are pretty common to find on eBay and Etsy. And they're really interesting as a, um, a primary source into what women were reading back then, and kind of you know, what they were doing with their pastimes. At least this is, you know, upper middle class ladies, not lower middle class working women, unfortunately. Um, but I found them really interesting. Um, I've found them through my own research into fashion history and art history, and I, you know, I just was really captivated. And I even found one in a local bookstore, um, antique bookstore in my hometown. And so I, of course, bought it because it was like maybe 16, 18 bucks. Let me see if I can grab it for you. Gently. Make out these ladies' book. Uh, 1866 for July. Um, it's lovely. It's really lovely. I will keep it safe over here somewhere. <laughs> I also have one that was given to me by a friend named The Ladies' Friend monthly magazine. I don't have it in its packaging because it's got a big old sticker that covers it. Uh, but I thought I'd carefully show you. Um, this one's very interesting. This one's from February, which is my fourth month, so I'm pretty sure my friend bought that purposely from that month for me. Um, and that one might be actually a Peterson's. I'm not really sure. It's by Mrs. Henry Peterson, so we'll see. But I also have this bad boy here. This is the one that we're going to be working from for this series. Um, and essentially what I wanted to do is, because every month has what they call, like, novelties, I wanted to go through and month by month, just kind of flip through the monthly uh, publication and choose one of the projects, maybe a recipe, or maybe just one of the actual, like, making projects, sewing projects, to make and document my process and show you what that looks like. Um, to get a better idea of what they were looking at, you know? This is essentially a DIY book. It's pretty cool, actually. And um, before I show you this month, which is April, um, I wanted to just make a note that um, these are in no way a tutorial. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and a lot of them have very little description of how to actually do it because it's just kind of assumed at the time that you knew what you were doing. Um, so this is just me kind of, you know, swimming without floaties, essentially. Um, just kind of figuring out as I go. It's kind of a, not only like an artistic mental exercise as well as like a research exercise, somewhat anthropological I suppose. Um, and I, you know, I've, I've looked to see if anyone else is doing these videos, and I haven't found anyone. I just see kind of like ASMR channels doing, like, readings of Go Diesel Ladies book. But I haven't found any, uh, like, people actually just recreating them. So I, I really want to see that content, so I thought, why not make it? And hopefully, you guys out there will be inspired. And, you know, there's plenty of this online that you can access for free. Maybe you guys can make some too. Um, and if you do, then share it to Instagram. Put a hashtag, um, QQ Novelties. I'll put the hashtag somewhere. <laughs> and then I'll see them and hopefully I can do a video featuring all of them later. Um, we'll see. My goal again is to do a full calendar year of these Goaties Ladies Books novelties. Um, and I'll just kind of flip through them again, give some book porn. I'll also give, of course, uh, timestamps. So in case you don't like the book porn, you can just skip to the project. I get it. <laughs> Not everyone's into it. Um, and maybe I'll even do a featured video where I will read some of the poetry because there's like poetry in them. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, let me know in the comments if you're interested in some readings. I'm not really an ASMR person, but I could get into it. We'll see. <laughs> Here we go. Alright, so here's my choice for Goatee's Ladies book. Uh, novelties for April. It's that serpent headband or headdress. Um, normally, there's actually a lot of publications before this part, but I just kind of skipped through. Um, I just wanted to show you guys the pretty pictures, as it were. Um, let me know if you guys want me to go more in depth and maybe read some of the stories in some later videos. Um, there's some pretty cute stuff in here. Uh, recipes, engravings, uh, music. 
you know, sheet music, some latest fashions for you to drool over. Um, maybe not replicate, maybe replicate, like that little corset cover is pretty sweet. And some more lace work. Figure 1. A headdress of lilac velvet petunias with groups of palm leaves. A double chain of gutta percha is carried round the head. In front, among the palm leaves, is an enameled blue and green golden serpent. Alright, let's have a look at what we're going to need here. Materials needed, like 17 to 18 link gutta percha chain, 2 to 3 lilac velvet petunias, 3 to 4 palm leaves, 1 green, blue, and gold enameled snake charm, and 1 headband, and then 3 little flower buds. Okay, so I'm just rolling out the polymer clay that I got ready, essentially, just you kneaded it and cutting it down to shape the gutta percha chain. Now, gutta percha is a natural thermoplastic, so um, it was also actually really popular uh, jewelry-wise in the 19th century. However, nowadays, I, all I can see that it's used for is dental work, um, so I can't find any, like, really expensive. I'm trying to do some stash busting here, not break the bank. <laughs> and I have tried on this chain in between just to see uh, if I like the length, and I'm going to bake it according to the package's instructions and then paint it. And I apologize for my horrible, horrible painting. Probably could have worn gloves and been a little more careful with my fingers, but I washed them as we all have been lately. <laughs> and after I painted the black, which is just a cheap target paint, I just painted the um, brown in a dry brush technique. Trying to, you know, emulate an enameled snake charm. Uh, of course that clay one broke in the oven, so I had a plastic one that I just spray painted with gold paint and then hand painted the quote unquote enameled bits. <laughs> I really just kind of slapdash did it. Now for the flowers, I'm just taking some ribbon and doing a really simple like gathering stitch around the inner edge and pouring taut, um, just kind of zhuzhing it as I go. Once I have it at the right length, I will cut it off and sew off the raw edges together as well, which is what I'm doing here. And there they are being sewn. I could do probably a better video on this um, in the book I used for inspirations in the link uh, in the bio down below as well. Now I just kind of make these wire stamens and stems together. I just wrap some uh, pearls and or vintage crystals uh, individually with the wire and then it with the floral tape multiple times around the base towards the flower head and then more delicately around the rest of the stem just to give it kind of more of that kind of realistic look. <laughs> and there he is. That one's done. All right, we got two. Now I'll make another one off camera. Now for the flower buds. I'm just taking little tiny scraps essentially of the same floral between the folds and then wrap that again with floral tape. This part is really what took me the longest. Um, I kept having like some weird mental struggle. I don't know why I couldn't figure out how to attempt these fronds. And I was like, oh, what if I make them out of paper? What if I, maybe I should just buy some. I was so, yeah, I was so disheartened. I thought about buying them and breaking my whole stash busting thing. I 
Tschüss immer. And then painted them. And yet again, making a huge mess on my fingers and my cutting mat. But luckily, those are both pretty easy to clean. Once I'm done painting, I just wrap with floral tape yet again till I'm satisfied. Here is the assembly. I've got my uh, wire headband just wrapped again with floral tape to make it easy, um, easier for the other pieces to stick onto it since again floral tape just kind of wraps to itself. And I'm just kind of getting the chain in the right position. And then the next piece will be those little flower buds. If you can hear purring in the background, it's because my cat is in here with me. Okay, now just time to wrap on the palm leaves and then I'll wrap on the flowers. Once I have the palm fronds in the way that I like them. And of course the petunias. I opted to do three because my ribbon wasn't very large. Um, the flowers are really kind of larger in the diagram. So, you know, to combat that I just made three instead and put two on one side and one kind of hidden with the other. And then next all we gotta do is the snake. So that guy I'm just gonna wrap on with some more floral wire. It's pretty well hidden since it's thin. And easy to work with. I really enjoy working with it. It's been probably one of the easiest things this whole entire process. I'm just kind of placing him in a good spot and then wrapping him. Also wrapping the frond to the headband for some extra stability and security. Just wrapping around one spot and then I'll wrap around another spot on him. There you have it. He's wrapped on. All secure. Focus, please, camera. Focus. Alrighty. You can see he's wrapped on through to the other side. Again, security is important. And there you have it. The finished headdress. Now let's go take it out for a spin, shall we? How's it going? I did the thing. I'm happy. I could be happier. Like if I gave myself a score out of 10, probably seven out of 10, um, cause I'm pretty happy, but mostly happy that I'm done. Less happy with the overall outcome. Um, there's definitely some spotty paint job spots on it. The chain, I mean, you saw my fingers. It was mostly getting paint on my fingers and the chain. But also, um, yeah, the leaves, I could also paint it a little bit better. It was dark, okay? I was tired. I was so done with the leaves. <laughs> I really only have myself to blame for my issues with this. So, overall, I enjoy this project. Um, I'm excited to do more. I think uh, May will be easier a little bit. Um, just because I've already picked out the thing <laughs> that I'm going to be doing while I was procrastinating on this project. Um, I would have to say that uh, it's only being held on by gravity. So if I was to, well, okay, it's held on pretty well because it's heavy, but like it's not that heavy. It's just the clay is a little heavy. It's a thing. 
if I was going to a ball or a well, the dinner would be fine because we're just sitting and eating. But if I was going to a ball or Dickens Fair in San Francisco, I would definitely want to put in some sort of like alligator clips or combs to keep it in place. Um, right now my hair is super short so it's not really anything to comb into so it would be clips. I, I'm, yeah, I'm excited to make more. I'm not sure if I want to do like a headdress every month or just various things that are offered in the Godie's Ladies book every month. Um, this one I had to do, obviously, because the fact that it's got a snake on it. Yeah, all in all, I'm excited to continue with this series. Um, I hope that if I've inspired you or this video inspired you to try to make some of these, that you um, tag me in your Instagram post, hashtag QQ novelties, and yeah, I'd love to see them. I, I've been really hoping that someone else would do this, but I figured, hey, if no one else is doing it, why the hell shouldn't I? So here we are. I'll see you next time, guys. Bye.